Hello guys, welcome back. My name is Andrei. Thanks for watching. And today we'll talk about uh, TensorFlow.js and uh, I'll show uh, how we could define Docker file to run TensorFlow.js uh, in a Docker container and how we could create Docker image. Also, we'll show a Kubernetes uh, definition file to create Kubernetes pod with uh, um, TensorFlow.js uh, container running inside. So let's see um, the uh, high-level architecture uh, for uh, our Skipper. And Skipper is um, uh, ML workflow uh, or pipeline, um, which is uh, capable to run either ML work, uh, microservices or uh, non-ML microservices, doesn't matter. And it comes uh, with three uh, main parts, this engine, communication, and microservices. Engine and communication are reusable things. And the engine supports asynchronous and synchronous requests. Then communication part runs RabbitMQ. And there's a Skipper library uh, available as a Python uh, library or Node.js library from NPM. Uh, it wraps uh, API, which uh, allows to communicate to RabbitMQ. And this uh, wrapper API we are using in all the containers to communicate to RabbitMQ. So that in the future, if we change the API, uh, uh, API interface should stay the same and there should be no changes in the containers which are using this API. There is a sample set of microservices uh, for data, uh, processing model training, model prediction. And recently, recently we created one more uh, sample service which runs uh, Node.js application with um, TensorFlow.js and um, uh, it runs mobile net uh, service and does uh, class image classification. And the, the next logical step, obviously, to show uh, and test how to run a TensorFlow.js application on, on Docker and on Kubernetes. So let's switch to the source view for that and let's see how a uh, Docker file is defined. So you'll find Docker file for Node.js application in under mobile net service uh, folder and over here is the Docker file. And probably this is the main uh, thing um, uh, I should, I should uh, talk about now is uh, that we are not using uh, either Alpine or uh, Slim uh, Linux distribution for the Docker image that uh, runs, uh, which contains TensorFlow.js application. <clears throat> this way to deploy TensorFlow.js application in uh, Docker image uh, with Linux uh, Alpine distribution, but then uh, I faced the problem that I could not run uh, predict uh, functionality or any other API from TensorFlow.js when it runs on Alpine uh, uh, Linux. And I didn't find any solutions so far. I'll keep researching that and maybe uh, when I find solution, I'll, I'll post it. But so far, I'm able to run uh, TensorFlow.js on Docker container, which runs on the base uh, Linux distribution, not uh, Alpine or uh, Slim. So I'm using Node. Uh, base node image and uh, then uh, not Alpine or Slim because TensorFlow.js would not run on that, uh, at least in my experience. Then I'm creating um, a working directory, copying package JSON from my application uh, from, from the microservice. And if you open package JSON, we see that we have dependencies for the scripper uh, library, then for TensorFlow.js node and for mobile net uh, model. <coughs> right, so when we call npm install, all those dependencies will be installed into this uh, image. Then uh, sources will be copied and entry point will be de uh, defined uh, later when a uh, container uh, will be started to run <coughs> uh, process from the main um, script. Okay, so this is the uh, Docker file and uh, our application have a set of uh, parameters uh, defined so that when we run either container uh, on Docker or container on, or Kubernetes, we should be able to pass some uh, values for those parameters to control the behavior of the application. So if we run just a Docker infrastructure and we run Docker containers, we could execute Docker Compose. And we, uh, where this is a place we define mobile net uh, service uh, container. We refer to the Docker file from uh, mobile net service and uh, for the environment variables we pass <clears throat> all the values for all those parameters that we, are, we have defined in our microservice. If you want to run on the Docker infrastructure, then we have another, uh, sorry, on Kubernetes infrastructure, we have another Docker Compose uh, designed for Kubernetes. And the main difference is that we don't pass any 
environment variables uh, for the uh, for basically in the script uh, here we just we don't create containers we just create images because containers <coughs> will be created by Kubernetes inside Kubernetes pods. Kubernetes would refer to the images that were defined by this uh, script. And finally, we have <coughs> we have um, Kubernetes um, artifact uh, which creates uh, Kubernetes pod and it refers to the image that was defined by uh, Docker uh, Compose Kubernetes script. And uh, there is a configuration map with all the uh, environment variables that will be initialized uh, for the container running in Kubernetes. And this is how it works. Then you have uh, fully running TensorFlow GS node application <coughs> on the backend, running either or uh, on Docker container or on a container inside a Kubernetes port. So. Uh, Thanks for watching and um, hopefully you, you find it useful and uh, it's quite exciting that you could run ML applications not only with Python on the backend but also with JavaScript with the help of TensorFlow.js uh, on Node. So thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye.